Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Mashiach Wumalak Yahushai. That is to say, Yahweh, being named the Heavenly Father, who the world will call God, and Yahweh Shai, being named his only begotten Son, who the world ugly called Jesus Christ. This is Brother Katsadia from WFI Jersey, Philly. And um, as you see, you know, maybe, Lord willing, you checked out the first video, uh, the book of Enoch being demolished, um, destroyed, debunked, uh, desecrated. Um, whatever other name you want to throw out there, completely just utterly destroyed. Now the same thing's about to happen to the book of Jasher. If you've been reading the book of Jasher, you keep it under your bed, you tuck it in at night, throw it out in the trash, burn it with fire, damn stomp all over it, rip it up, run over it, damn let 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 a damn raccoon come eat it. Do whatever you gotta do, but get this filthy book out of your house. And I know, it's, I know it's those in Israel that get down with this. Reading the book of Jasher, talking about this. Is, this is folly. The same way the book of Enoch is folly. This book of Jasher, the book of Jubilees, all these other books are made up books that we cannot begin into. The book of Mormonism, the apocalypse of Moses, the apocalypse of Adam. All these false books. Jake, you, you don't even study the Bible and you want to be studying these books. You want to be going into these things and actually reading it and trying to get understanding from it. Well, you don't even know what wisdom of Solomon, the 16th chapter is going into. You can't even you can't even go into the 12 feathers um, in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 12th, uh, it's like it, 2nd Ezra, the 11th and 12th chapter. You, you're not even able to go into the things that's in Revelation, but you want to go into these other books and think these books are the books you're supposed to be reading. You don't even know what the fruits of the spirit are, but you're going into these false books and ideologies. Put it away. Just put it away. It's filthy, it's madness. And, and, and truth be told, you know, um, the most high gonna get up with you, right? If you're getting down with this. This the book. Salakia. Um, what did I want? Bear with me one second while I while I retrain my thought. Let me go to the book of um Romans. Right? Let's get this. Kick it off with this real quick. This is the book of Romans, chapter 16, and verse 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And there's a lot of different doctrines that's out here that's against with the scripture that we learned of. There's, I mean, it's so many. Literally, I just, I just mentioned a few, but you, you also got these other books that mankind has subscribed to from um, 5 percenterism and uh, even uh, 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 the, the filthy Quran, the abominable Quran. I mean, it's just all different types of madnesses out here that our people like to get down with. The Talmud, I mean, what are you going to these other books for? Our heritage is Genesis through the book of Revelation. And it's not time to be going into these different doctrines in these last days. Right. But we know that the Lord said it was going to happen. This first Timothy chapter four and verse one. It says now the spirit speak of expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And these things are man-made, abomination, not of the Most High, but of filthy men to co collect money from Israel and to bug their mind out. That's how Esau gets down, right? Let's go to this real quick in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse number 20. It says, woe unto, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet. And reading these wicked books, that's putting bitter for sweet. The book of Jasher is not a book authorized by Yahweh Yahweh Shai. This is not the word of the Lord. If you're getting down with other books, that's not the word of the Lord. And accepting it as the gospel of Yahweh Shai, you, you, the Most High is going to get up with you. It says... Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, 
that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. The Most High is not getting down with that. All right. So now let's go into this thing right here. Let's obliterate this thing once and for all. So it says this is one of the apocryphal uh, books of Jasher. There are several, as many as five separate works by this by its title, all composed much later than biblical times. This is all composed much later than biblical times. Damn. It says this particular one is a translation of a Hebrew print or Hebrew book printed in 1613. Well, the things that we have in the Bible are printed in 1611. Right. The King James Version Bible, authorized by King James, that was inspired by some of the writings that was found from William Tinsdale, which was inspired by some of the writings that was inspired by Jerome, which were inspired by some of the writings that were found by the Maser that was found in the Masoretic text, the Septuagint, which is the, the Old Testament translated from the Hebrew to the Greek. Right, which are inspired by the things that are written by Isaiah, by Jeremiah, by Ezra, by uh, David, by Moses, by the mighty men of the Most High, which are inspired by the Most High himself, who's given man this authority to go ahead and write these words of, of his, uh, it's like write his words down and print it in a book that is found in the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse number one. And it reads, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, thus speak of Yahweh, God of Israel, saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. So the Lord has inspired the different chosen men throughout time to write these different words down and to print it in a book. Let's see if this filthy book right here, the book of Jasher is one of these books that were inspired by the Most High. Because the Lord, his word is true. His word is not going to have no blemish in it, no um, contradiction in it. It's going to be thus said the Most High. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 2. It says, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So the words of the Lord are faithful and true. They're not unfaithful and false. So anything that's not lining up with this Bible is not the words of the Most High, evidently. That should be plain. But I have to lay the groundwork because, again, I know some may be clicking on this video that do get down with this book and we're obliterating it. And we went to it to decimate it so you don't have to go dig your nose into it and try to damn check this book out. We're not, the Lord's not dealing with it. So this is Jasher chapter 16. Actually, let me, let me continue on with this. Because it says, um, it says, this text covers much of the same ground as the traditional mosaic books of the Bible. So we're going to see that. So this should line up directly with what was written in Genesis through Deuteronomy, right? The mosaic books of the Bible, the Torah, the Torah. It says, from the creation of the world to the death of Moses, albeit with several minor variations. Hold on now. So you telling me there's another book that's out here that has minor variations than was written in the Bible. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know. That tells you everything you need to know. The Most High is not getting down with this. Let me get this real quick. Bear with me real, real quick. Let me find this. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So just a little bit of, really this is going to sin, but... Just a little bit of impurity is going to make the whole thing impure. 
if you have a water bottle and a drop of blood falls into that water bottle, it's a full water bottle, right? You just took the lid open or uh, just um, just open up the uh, the bottle, took the cap off, and a little bit a drop of blood or whatever else, it drops into it. It's going to turn a whole bottle like that, just a little drop. Therefore, a little leaven, a little sin or impurity is going to make the whole thing corrupt. If I got a gold chain and it's 24 karat gold mostly, but a one part of it is copper, is it really 24 karat? And if you didn't know, the measure of gold is 24 out of 24. So the carats go by 24 out of 24. If you hear something about 14 carats, that means out of 24 carats, meaning 24 being the pure in today's time, then... It's 14 pure, uh, parts of it is pure. It's not fully pure. So 24 karat gold is actually pure gold in today's time. Not the real gold that's hidden somewhere that we'll be able to get most of our will in the kingdom. But the time that we have right now, that shows you that 14 is not pure. Or 10 karat gold or 18 karat gold. That's not pure. That has different uh, myloids and different, different types of uh, metals and materials. Is not complete. It's not whole. So a little bit of evil, a little bit of malignity, a little bit of impurity, the whole thing is not pure. Right? So let's go to this in the book of Jasher, chapter 16, in verse 23. Right? It says, And Sarai, the daughter of Haran, Right, Sarah, the daughter of Haran, Abram's wife, was still barren in those days. She did not bear to Abram either son or daughter. So hold on. So it's saying that Sarah is the daughter of Haran. Now, if you didn't know, Haran is actually Abraham's brother. Let's go to this. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter 11. And verse 31. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. It says. Yeah, I believe that's what I want. Yeah, come. It says, um, actually, I want to start at verse 29 real quick. It says, and Abram and Nahor took them wives. It says, um, reading on. Damn, this is not where I want it. I'm going to start a little higher. Bear with me. Slack you. Start a little higher, 27, to get the context. Now, these are the generations of uh, Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. So Terah, his sons are Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now, Haran, it says begot Lot, meaning that's his child that he had was Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. Now, where did it say that Haran had the daughter or, or uh, one of his daughters was known as Sarah? It's not, that's not mentioned. Verse 29. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai or Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, Right, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iska. Now, it that's not that doesn't link up with what's mentioned in the scriptures. All right, um, Sarah being the daughter of Haran is not found in the scripture. That's actually opposite. It was found right here, written in the scripture. So man is just adding on to this thing. That's already. Strike one, right? Strike one, it, it might have been a small one. You might be like, oh, well, that's not going to make me not read the book of Jasher. But hold on. Again, the Lord said his word is found faithful and true. So now, 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. It shouldn't be any schisms like it says. It is several minor variations. There's no minor variation that you can take 
from the Bible and go and make your own thing. You go and make a minor variation. You're going to be picking up your arms and limbs because the Lord made a minor variation of you. This is Revelation chapter 22 and verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues which are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. All right. So now. Let's go back to this. Let's go to uh, Jasher chapter 27. It's the next account. This is madness. This is Jasher chapter 27 and verse 1. And Esau at that time, after the death of Abraham, frequently went in the field to hunt. And Nimrod, king of Babel, the same was Amraphel, also frequently went with his mighty men to hunt in the field and to walk about with his men in the cool of the day. So you have Nimrod and Esau living in the same time period in the book of Jasher, the 27th chapter. First off, let's just go prove. I'm, actually, I'm going to read on, right? Because we're going to go, we're going to we're going to uh, sharply dissect this. I'm going to jump to verse 7. And Nimrod and two of his men that were with him came to the place where they were. And Esau started suddenly from his lurking place. So in the context above, they was kind of, um, they was, uh, Esau kind of started lurking. Right. Right. Uh, Nimrod was jealous of Esau. So Esau kind of lurked in the field and let's see what happens. So verse seven and Nimrod and two of his men were in the f it's like they were with him, came to the place where they were when Esau started suddenly from his lurking place and drew his sword and hastened and ran to Nimrod and cut off his head. So you have Esau. Being the one that ran through and killed Nimrod. Where is this found in the Bible? But hold on. We're going to we're going to continue on because it's going to show even the, the, the context and when this actually occurred. This all occurred in the same day as something else that we know in the scripture. But let's see, though. It says and Esau fought a desperate fight with two men that were with Nimrod. And when they called out to him. Esau turned to them and smote them to death with a sword and all the mighty men of Nimrod who had left him to go to the wilderness heard the cry at a distance and they knew the voices of those two men and they ran to know the cause of it. When they found their king and two men that were with him lying dead in the wilderness. Verse 10. And when Esau saw the mighty men of Nimrod coming at a distance, he fled and thereby escaped. And Esau took the viable garments of Nimrod with Nimrod's father, which Nimrod's father had uh, bequeathed to Nimrod and with which Nimrod prevailed over the whole land. And he ran and concealed them in his house. And Esau took those garments and ran into the city on account of Nimrod's men. And he came into his father's house, wearied and exhausted from fight. And he was ready to die. Though grief, when he uh, approached his brother Jacob and sat before him, and he said unto his brother Jacob, Behold, I shall die this day, and wherefore do then I want the birthright? And Jacob acted wisely with Esau in this matter, and Esau sold his birthright to Jacob, for it was so brought, by, uh, brought about by the Lord. Now, where in the Bible... Does it show that Esau was out in the field killing Nimrod, ran back in, grabbed Nimrod's garment. He, he comes in the house. He goes to Jacob. He says, look, I'm about to die. I don't need his birthright. He sells the birthright to Jacob. And that's how that took place. That's clearly against the scripture and we're going to show it. But first, we want to show that where Nimrod even mentioned that in the Bible. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 10. Let's go to verse 6. Genesis 10 and 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, 
and Canaan. Now, these are all of the, um, this is the generations of the sons of, um, you know, Noah, his sons, Shem, Ham, Japhet, you know, and the, and the children that they had afterwards. So now we're about to read about Ham. It says, and the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, put in Canaan. And the sons of Cush, it says, Shaba or Seba and Havilah and, and, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to verse 8. And Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. And he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and erect, and Akkad, and Kana, and it's like in the land of Shinar. So this is Nimrod, right? It doesn't really mention Nimrod again after this. Now, this is all way in gen this is the son Nimrod is the son of Cush. And Ham had three what four sons? Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. So you're telling me that before Abraham even, because that's when Nimrod was around. Before Abraham, because we know that um Abraham was a son of Shem. Let's go to the lineage of Shem real quick. The children of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arx, Axfad, Lud, and Aram. And Aram, and it's like in the children of Aram, or Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mesh. And Arx, Axfad begot Salah, and Salah begot Eber, and unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan, and Joktan begot Almadad and Shalef, and her Hazameth, and Jerah, and it and it goes on, it goes on, right? Um, and even when we go to Genesis, the I believe I want Genesis the twelfth chapter, right? Goes further on to this lineage, right? It says in Nahor lived nine and and twenty years, uh, nine and twenty years, and begot Terah, and Terah, it's like, and Nahor uh, lived after be, this is Genesis 11 and 25, and Nahor lived after he begot Terah, and 119 years, and begot sons and daughters, and Terah lived 70 years, and begot Abram, Nahor, and Aran, now these are the generations of Terah, Terah begot uh, Abram, Nahor, in Haran, and Haran begot Lot. Then there's a whole lineage since Sh uh, Shem on down, all the way down till you get to Abraham. So how could, and we know Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob and Esau. How could we get a account where you have this timeline that doesn't add up? Between Nimrod being around, still in the earth. Coming from the lineage of Ham. Ham having four sons. Cush being his first son. Cush immediately. I'm not going to say immediately, but having Nimrod. This lineage doesn't even link up. The timeline would not link up with what we're seeing over here. With the, the long sea line of Shem before we get to Abraham. So things just aren't adding up. That would make no sense. So that's already strike two. But let's go to Genesis 25. Because it also said that after we know this couldn't be possible for Esau to be the one to go kill Nimrod. But it says after he killed Nimrod, he took the garment, ran into the house and sold his birthright to Jacob. Let's see if that's found in Genesis 25. This is Genesis chapter 25 and verse 27, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man in the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore, with his name called Edom. And Jacob said, 
sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. What profit shall his birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And Jacob then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau, Esau despised his birthright. Where was the account where Esau came in the field, from the field, scared of his life? With a garment from Nimrod. And then was like, look, let me just sell you this birthright because I'm about to die today. That's not a that's not the account in the Bible. That's strike three. If you read in the book of Nimrod, uh, uh, Jasher, get the hell out of it. Them timelines don't add up and nor is that account found in the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter. But there is more and it's only going to get worse. We're here to tell you that. Let's go to, let's, wow, let's go to the book of Jasher, chapter 36, and verse 31, it says, and afterward, about an hundred and twenty great and terrible animals came out from the wilderness at the other side of the sea, and they all came to the place where the asses were. And they placed themselves there. And those animals, from their middle downward, so from your stomach on down, were in the shape of the children of men. And from their middle upward, some had the likeness of bears, and some the likeness of the, the kephas. And tails behind them from between their shoulders reaching down to the earth, like the tails of the du the duchy path, the duchy fest. What the hell is the duchy fest? And these animals came and mounted and rolled upon our asses and led them away, and they went away unto this day. So they wow, so you got these different you got the, the key chiefs, you got the duchy theft, you got these animal, you got these top part bears, right? Top bear, bottom part male. Let's look this up. Let's see if the Lord is dealing with. Let's look this up. This is where freak, freak damn fetish Esau has. I don't know what the hell we just saw, but I'm not ever going to click on that again. But, um. So this is what you got out here. You got top bear, right? And you got part bear, part man. This is these animals that was out there. Is this what the Lord is talking about? Wow. 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 Man, bear, pig. Got a damn bear face on. Is this what the Lord talking about? You reading the book of Jasher, this is what you believe in? This is what you believe in? As you get down with this shit thing, only ever read the book of Jasher at 3 a.m. in the morning when everybody sleep in the house. Come on, man. Just come on. Just get real. The bear man. Look at this. This is Esau thing. This is his thing. Nature's latest wonder. The bear man. Wow. Wow. Traveling with a half bear. Commissioned by Ali Miller. Miller. Wow. All right, we're But hold on, it don't it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. 
then let's go back to this thing. Because you got the half bear, you got the bare top, and you got, you know, the, it has a the top of it is damn uh, bear, and the bottom of it is a bear. It's like it, vice versa. Top of it is damn, damn it's got, getting me damn confused. The top of it is a bear, and the bottom is a man. But let's see what else they got in this filthy book of Jasher. Let's go to Jasher chapter 61. And verse 15. And Zepho went and he saw. And behold, there was a large cave at the bottom of the mountain. And there was a great stone there at the entrance of the cave. And Zepho split the stone. And he came into the cave and looked. And behold, a large animal was devouring the ox. From the middle upward, it resembled a man. And from the middle downward, it resembled an animal. And Zepho rose against the, the animal and slew it with his swords. So where is the Lord dealing with? Because they, they have these type things in these damn uh, uh, cartoon movies that you, they be out there. Uh, Narnia and um, Garland, Guardians of the Galaxy and all these different weird movies. Man, damn, I'll type a part man. Yeah, and then part damn horse. A centaur. That's what it is. This is Greek mythology. This is Greekism. Part man, part horse. Because it said animal. Because it, it couldn't even tell you what type of animal it was. This is what Esau wants to do. This is what he wants to do. Just be out there. Look at this. This is what this how they get down. This mythology right here. Got the. They're trying to reenact the so-called medieval times. When they weren't in rulership anyway, but this is what they, you know, they was doing in their caves. Part man, part horse. Or part beast. Part man, part animal. Look this up. Because that's what it said. Oh, I don't know. Oh, wow. It's evil. It's a lot going on in this. Can't even look at certain pictures. Most are willing to flag the channel. This is evil. Most are willing, man. But enough of this. Damn freakism. A lot of freakism. But we know the most is not dealing with that. Let's go to this in 1 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 39, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial. Well, you can rest right there. So there's different types of flesh. The Lord is not breeding Man with beast, and in fact, that's against the law. This is Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 15. It says, and if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. And we know this is how Esau wants to get down, because you have these damn, uh, what is it called? There's a, um, there's a, uh, uh, uh. Damn, what is it? There is a new thing out there in the earth where man could lay down with his animals. And they're trying to get that law passed. Where man could lay down with their animals now. The Lord said you can't do that. It says, and if a woman approached unto any beast and lied there, there too. And there are different things out there in the earth where women... They try to lay down with horses or they try to lay down with a lion and just be wicked. They got a man, he bending over his dog. I mean, it's all types of evil madness out here in this earth. The Lord said you can't do that. But we know who likes to do that. That's that's Ham. Ham gets down like that. And we know that Esau gets down like that. It says, thou shalt surely kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And you got to kill the beast because the beast is defiled now. 
a woman is laying down with it. It's the fault. Now this beast may get a uh, damn this spirit on them to go out and sexualize different animals or different um humans, different different women uh, and and men. Be all because that one woman wanted to lay down with a horse. The Lord said you gotta put them both to death, man. And that horse or that animal, it probably it didn't do it, didn't know what was going on. But guess what? It has to be put to death. Because that's the that's defiled. The, the Lord's not getting down like, like that. No creeping off with your cat in the middle of the night. Because your woman didn't want to give you some, you know, in the past damn few months. God forbid she's doing that. That's off. But you shouldn't be trying to freak out with your animal because your lady is not uh uh Rendering due benevolence to you, like the scripture says, in a more PG term in First Corinthians, the seventh chapter. And that's off, ladies. Lord willing, you're not doing that. None of you sisters of Zion are damn uh, withholding your man from doing what he's supposed to be doing in righteousness. But enough of this topic. Let's get to the next one. You go on day on this. Let's go to Jasher, the 80th chapter. Jasher, the 80th chapter. Like I said, it's going to get worse. Now, this whole book of Jasher, the 80th chapter, is their bugged out um, rendition um, version or variation, like you said, of what took place in Egypt, the, the 10 plagues of Egypt. I'm not going to read each and every one of them. And I, I don't even encourage you to read each and every one of them, but I'm going to at least read just a few. So this is, uh, hold on. Damn, what the hell's going on? Damn. This is Jasher chapter 80 and verse 7. That's sort of 6. It says, And the Lord sent again and caused all their waters to bring forth frogs, and all the frogs came into the houses of the Egyptians. And when the Egyptians drank, their bellies were filled with frogs and they danced in their bellies and they dance when and they dance when in the river. Now hold on. It's saying that there's frogs that were in the bellies of these Egyptians. Now I'm gonna get this real quick. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Right? Let's go to Exodus. Chapter 8 and verse 3. It says, And a river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up, is Exodus 8 and 3, which shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thine ovens and into thy kneading throws. And a frog shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand uh, with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and call and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. So that's what happened. Now these frogs came up, but it had no account of these frogs being in the belly of these Egyptians. That didn't happen. That's not what happened. But this was happening over here. These frogs is in the belly. They're dancing and they're they're damn doing a two-step and the cupic shuffle and the damn uh what's the other dance that you do at your auntie wedding? What is those other dances out there? Uh cupic shuffle, um, yeah, electric slide. Everybody formed a long line. Your uncle just got done from having his seventh drink, and he's got everybody in a long line. Doing an electric slide. Talking about to the left. Take it back now, y'all. That's what the that's what the, the frogs is doing in the belly. One hop this time. Right foot left stuck. <laughs> that's not what was going on, man. Right? It says verse 8. And all their drinking water and cooking water turned to frogs. Also, when they lay in their beds, their perspiration bred frogs. Now, perspiration, if you didn't know, is your sweat, right? Perspiration, sweat, the process of sweating. 
So it's, it's saying once they start sweating, it bred frogs. If you didn't know what bread means, it means create. Bread means to reproduce, right? Right, literally, that's the word, a verb, reproduce. So these frogs, or this their sweat, made frogs. And even their drinking water and the water they cook with, it turned to frogs. No, the Lord, the Lord did fill, uh, the, he did bring um, frogs in the ponds at great abundance. Like we read in the book of Exodus, the eighth chapter. But man was not out there sweating frogs. Now, like I said, there's so many more bugged out renditions of what actually took place. Um, but um, nothing is worse than this. We're about to read right here. This is the book of Exodus. Or sorry, I said Exodus. Wow. This is the book of Jasher. Chapter 80 and verse 19. It says, and when the Egyptians hid themselves on account of the swarm of animals, they locked their doors after them. And God ordered the Sulanoth, the Sulanoth, which was in the sea, to come up and go into Egypt. And she had long arms, 10 cubics in length of the cubic of a man. So hold on. Let's go back to, I don't know if you watched the last video, but this is, let's go to cubic, cubic defeat. Now, cubics defeat. This thing is 10 cubits, which is 15 feet tall. So this thing that's 15 feet tall, right? 15 feet tall, came out from the sea. It says, she went, verse 21, she went upon the roofs and uncovered the raftering and flooring and cut them. So pretty much she, she ripped the roofs off. She went to the Egyptian houses and ripped the roofs off. And stretched forth her arm into the house and removed the lock and the bolt and opened the houses of the, of Egypt. Now, there, there's a lot right there. First and foremost, what the hell is a Sunanuth? That's first and foremost. I, t I looked it up. It says no content found. Even Esau knows no such thing as a Sunanuth. This is not... The Lost Wars of Yahuwah. Missing books, forbidden history. This is folly. It says the unexpected co cosmology. Yeah, it's unexpected because it's not real. So they're saying it's a Squidward type thing? That's what they're saying? It literally said, it literally just, this is a Sunanuf. This thing. This is what we're dealing with, man. This is what y'all reading. Lord willing, y'all ain't reading it, but this is what Israel is reading in these last days. A sooner new. This, this is this is from SpongeBob SquarePants, man. Stop playing games. That's Squidward. Hold on now. Hold up. Just wait one second, because I, I know I saw. Maybe I'm maybe I'm going off. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm going off. Maybe let me see something real quick. Squidward, right? Let's look up Squidward and let's see what's going on. I know. I know this is not the sooner they talk about, cause they got Squidward. You know, he's 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 a damn uh, squid, right? But this thing right here, right? I don't even know what this is, but anyway, this, that's Squidward. And when we go back over to this picture, this Sunanuth, this is the pit. It says Squidward mosaic found in Pompeii. That thing, that Squid, that's literally the Sunanuth that they're trying to. This is, again, this is Greek mythology. This is Greek mythology. This is what they were saying came up from the water. We know this is not a book of the Most High. This is book of Esau. Try to disguise it and say the book of Jasher. No, that's the book of Esau. He wrote this. 
The Lord's not dealing with something like that coming up from the sea. All right? So let's put the folly down. Then they try to put the Yiddish or the modern Hebrew right there and try to act like that's that's something that we should be looking into. No, this is Jasherah. This is the prime example right there. A book of fairy tales, witches and warlocks in mythology. So don't be getting don't be getting down like this no more, man. This is bad. This is a damn book you might find in a damn library over by the fiction section or science fiction. Our people will believe this, but won't believe they're the Israelites. Our people will believe this, but won't believe it was on a slave ship. Oh, no, nah, I wasn't. My forefathers wasn't on a slave ship. Well, show, me a, show me a slave ship. But yet you're you willing to go in a book that's, that's talking about the Sunanuth, that's reaching. And let's go back to this, too. Because this must be the, if this is a real thing, it's the dumbest animal or person or whatever beast, man, creation, whatever else was, this the dumbest. First and foremost, it said it ripped off the roof of the, verse 21, and she went upon the roofs and uncovered the rafterings and the floors and cut them and stretched forth her arm into the house and removed the lock and the bolt and opened the, the houses of, the, of Egypt. So it ripped off the roof only to go into it to unlock the door. To do what? With the going to the house? Why would you have to rip off the roof to unlock the door? If you already ripped off the roof, why don't you just hop into the house? And if it's 15 feet tall, what is it opening the door for, unlocking the door for when it no damn well can't fit in that door? So this just show you the folly and the madness, man, of these false books that that our people like to dibble and dabble into. And, and, and honestly, you know, I'm fed up, but we're going to get one last one. We're going to put this thing to bed. As if it wasn't already dead to begin with. I lost count of how many strikes this thing caught so far. But this is this is chapter 81. Chapter 81 and verse 70, 37. Slack here. It says, and Moses... I started... Yeah, let, let's get to it, right to it. It says, um, and Moses did so... And he lifted up his rod upon the sea and divided it. And the waters of the sea were divided into 12 parts. And the children of Israel passed through on foot with shoes as a man would pass through and prepare a road. So it says that instead of Moses parting the Red Sea, one part, a was parted into 12 different parts. Now, let's see if this is biblical. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 14 and verse 21. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. So what is it saying on their right hand and their left? If Moses parted the Red Sea and the waters are now a wall, meaning it's on the right hand, one side, and left hand, meaning the other side, and they walk straight through. This is not talking about 12 different sections. It's one section. And the waters became a wall on each side of them, the left hand side and the right hand side. This is Greek mythology. You need to stay far away from it. This book was written by the so-called white man. You understand? This is not of the most I got. Right? Let's go to the book of Titus. Chapter 1 and verse 14. Right? Once again. Titus 1 and 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. This book can turn you away from the truth. This book can seduce you. It can bug you out. This is a bugged out book. Even the animals in this book are bugged out. How would you a book a damn animal rip open a roof just to unlock the door and then don't even go in the door? Can't even fit in the door to begin with. That's why I had to rip off the roof. Don't even look, listen. 
Most are willing he was edified, and Lord willing you stay ten toes down with the scripture has said. Put away these folly books and do this to these books. Burn them up. With that, Kwame Shirala, Shalom.